What's up everybody, it's Critical, also known as Professor Steelmeat, and today's lesson topic is prions. Now if you're like me, a hypochondriac, you hit your hand on the edge of a table and you instantly think you've contracted fucking gonorrhea or something, then you've probably done some research on prions since they're being talked about a lot more recently. So since they're becoming such a popular subject, I'd like to teach you all what they are, how they work, etc. So go ahead and turn your textbooks to page go fuck yourself and let's begin. Now what is a prion? Fundamentally a prion is a misfolded protein, but it's infectious and there's no nucleotides, which means there's no DNA and there's no RNA, and it infects the properly folded prion proteins, and once there's enough of this misfolded protein, it causes cell death in the brain, which leaves holes in the brain, which is what I'm illustrating with that drawing right there that just looks like a really badly drawn chocolate chip cookie, and then eventually the person dies. It's the cause of what's known as TSEs, or transmissible spongiform encephalopathies, and it's just some very shitty shit. Now here's a brief history of its discovery. In 1950, there was an outbreak of what's known as Kuru in Papua New Guinea. Those infected with Kuru lost the ability to walk, chew, and swallow. So obviously, since they weren't e able to eat, they died. About 10 years later, this Kuru outbreak, as well as scabies, was studied. Scabies is another TSE, but it only affects goats and sheep. This head of cauliflower represents a sheep. It was studied by two London researchers, and they hypothesized that these TSEs were the result of a protein-only pathogen. Then, in 1982, a neurologist named Stanley Naughty Nipples Prusner came forward and announced that he had proven the hypothesis correct and named them prions, which is short for proteinaceous infectious particles. Now, that's a brief history of how prions were discovered. Now, let's really get into what they are. Now, there's two things here. There's PRPC, which is normal, and PRPSC, which is the misfolded version. PRP is just short for prion protein. Now, everyone's body has PRPC in it, although no one understands exactly what PRPC does for the body. And I clearly don't know how to draw the fucking thing. It looks like a wacky, waving, inflatable, tube-flailing arm man, or whatever they're called. But that's the best I can do, and that's basically what PRPC looks like, and there's usually no problems with it, and it's completely normal, although no one knows its exact function. Maybe it makes you shoot cum further, maybe it makes your teeth whiter, maybe it's fucking Maybelline. No one has any idea, really. Your guess is as good as everyone else's. And then there's the abnormal version, which is the prion disease-causing one, PRPSC, which is the misfolded protein. And it's also poorly drawn. I'm just, I'm not very good at drawing shit, but that's kind of what that looks like. This shit causes a lot of scary shit, like fatal familial insomnia. This is another really bad drawing I know. It looks like he's laying his head on a bar of soap. I'm sorry, I'm a horrible artist, but I'm doing the best I can. Now, fatal familial insomnia affects the person's ability to sleep, eventually making them completely unable to sleep, which leads to extreme weight loss. This giant shoe is supposed to be a scale, and then eventually death. Now, it's not just them wide awake and not able to sleep. They beg to sleep. They are just perpetually exhausted and craving sleep, but their body just will not let them. It's a horrible disease, and there's a lot of other horrible diseases that this causes, such as Creutzfeldt jacob disease, which I'm drawing here, and also the one most of you have probably heard of before, mad cow disease. It also causes something in deer called chronic wasting disease. It just causes a whole bunch of shit. That's a very sad cow. Mad cow disease was very sad time for cows and everyone else. Actually, you know what, real quick fun fact, there's only two things in the entire universe. There's cows and everything that isn't a cow, so that really affected a lot of shit when that, when that was going around. So let's talk about how this PRPSC spreads to the normal prion proteins. This is very haphazardly drawn, I just wanted to quickly show how it does it. So the misfolded protein comes in contact with the normally folded protein, and it's able to actually infect it and turn it into another PRPSC and completely get rid of the normal folded one. And it does this numerous times until they all form a long chain called an amyloid fiber. Now this amyloid fiber is toxic to the surrounding cells in the brain, so what happens is it starts to kill off all the cells surrounding it. Yes, I know this looks like a tit with tentacles coming off of it. It kills all of these cells, and then these cells get cleaned up, but the amyloid fiber stays. And once these cells are cleaned up, it leads to holes in the brain, and those holes obviously aren't good, and that leads to diseases. But the amyloid fiber continues to multiply until there's pretty much nothing left of the brain. Now, how do you contract one of these TSEs? They've identified three ways. You consume contaminated meat where the animal had a prion disease, thus you would get the prion disease. They also believe that there's just a genetic mutation that can occur that can cause the, pro the prion protein to misfold. 
And they also believe that there's just a random chance that the prion protein will misfold, thus giving the person a prion disease. Now I'd like to point out that contaminated meat isn't an issue of ill-prepared meat. You could cook that motherfucker to a block of charcoal and it would still not get rid of the prion disease if the animal the meat came from had it. So let's talk about that. These prions are extremely difficult to get rid of. Dynamite wouldn't blow that shit up. Here's a prion taking a bath in a volcano. It would survive that and spit in the volcano's face. Alcohol and bleach doesn't kill prions. They are extremely difficult for scientists to get rid of. Autoclaving, boiling, alcohol, radiation, none of the standard methods work on prions. But in all honesty, the volcano thing and the dynamite was a bit of an exaggeration. You can actually burn prions and get rid of them. It breaks the peptide bonds and the prions are destroyed. But that's not exactly practical. You can't light someone on fire or light an animal on fire and say they're cured of the prion disease. It doesn't work like that. So yeah, they are extremely difficult to get rid of in an organism. Now one last thing I wanted to touch on on the subject of prions is a lot of scientists and researchers don't believe prions either exist or exist in the way that they are said to. Since prions don't have any nucleotides, DNA, RNA, they believe they can't possibly exist by themselves and be causing these as solely proteins. There must be something else at play. So they discredit a lot of the prion so a lot of the prion research and say it's it's hogwash they say it's poop shit they say a lot of shit about it so i just wanted to point that out that there is a debate on whether or not prions a exist or b exist like they're said to and yeah that's about all for prions some really horrible shit and that's all for today's lesson remember to wish professor steel meat a good day and class is dismissed see ya